Oh my gosh, everybody, it's that golden light, the golden plant, that golden moment. <laughs> this is goldenrod, one of our favorite plants. It's so stunning, so resilient, and offers so much food. There are honeybees in here, there's bumblebees, sweat bees, different kinds of flies, locust borers, silver spotted skippers. I'm forgetting a million. <laughs> this plant offers pollen and nectar and seeds once it's gone to seed to different birds. This morning, because this plant offers so many insects in ways of all the ones I just mentioned, plus caterpillars, there was a whole flock of warblers right in here gleaning the flower heads, the leaves. It was so cool to see, and it's right on the edge. They were flitting about so fast. Steve and I were just having a blast watching. We definitely saw Tennessee warblers and also black-throated blues. And you can see it's this, this mixture of shrubs and trees and that sugar maple there attracts a ton of migratory birds. And so then they spilled out into here because goldenrod has so many insects that love it. And I should say invertebrates. If I was to walk through here, there are myriad gorgeous spiders we started counting the other day and just in 10 feet we had, I don't know, 20 spiders, just like that, with these big beautiful webs, so many orb weavers. Goldenrod is one of those keystone species because it affects an ecosystem so very much. It offers so much to so many. And in here, these are goldenrods that we didn't plant. And they're able to overcome European grasses they're able to overcome disturbed soils, and they're able to deal with drought. And it's really a plant to be lauded and applauded. In here we have Canada goldenrod, tall goldenrod, likely some giant goldenrod. There is riddles that we planted. And right up here I want to show you something that's really interesting. Because so many of these species get lumped together, those first three especially, but they're not. They have different chromosome numbers. And right in here, here we go, there's this bunch gull. And this gull maker tends to prefer tall goldenrod. So we have a hard time telling the difference between those different species but they don't. Different kinds of midges and wasps and flies. So you get these bunch galls, you get ball galls, and you get these leaf spot galls on the thin leaved goldenrod, which I'm not seeing right in here, but we have really abundant in other places. And just look at that. That's a sea of plants. There's other species intermixed by a lot a lot of different prairie species. They're just not blooming. They're already all done. So these are late and there are asters mixed in here. New England aster, heath aster, a lot of them that are even later. They haven't even begun to flower yet. So that is a great food source for so many. And it's a great food source for us, isn't it? In terms of visual pleasure. There are these Spittle bugs on here, and I have seen the birds I'm talking about probing through these spittle bugs. So I'm not quite clear if they were getting moisture or going for the larva itself. I'm not sure. It's very dry here, and so these moisture making machines, in terms of insects, and then any moisture that Steve and I put out, they're readily sought out. I've loved goldenrod since I was a wee, wee little girl, so it feels like a real gift to share space and have this plant here. 
Here is a New England aster yet to flower. So cheers to the goldenrod.